thanks very much for coming out. Um, as we've discussed many times in the past, Vancouver has a, a long and um, rich history of people gathering to express their views by participating in various protests and demonstrations. By the end of this year, we expect that we will have seen uh, more than uh, 1,000 uh, protests throughout the city uh, for people expressing uh, their views on various issues. Um, we support everyone's right to peacefully assemble and to express themselves, and we work hard to uh, provide an environment that allows for peaceful protest. We also have an obligation to enforce uh, the law when protests become unsafe or unlawful. Since October 7th, we've seen a significant increase in the numbers of people who are gathering to protest throughout the city. We've also seen a, sig a significant increase in the emotions that people are expressing as they do uh, gather to protest. Uh, last night, our officers responded to a, a spontaneous protest in the area of Main and Kiefer Street in Chinatown um, after approximately 250 people um, gathered to protest and surrounded a restaurant. Uh, Prime Minister Trudeau was inside the restaurant at that time, and the actions of the protesters did uh, prompt a significant police response. Specifically, the protesters had surrounded the restaurant um, with about 150 protesters uh, on Main Street out front and about another 100 uh, in the lane behind uh, the restaurant. We believe the protesters took some um, specific, uh, specific actions that caused us concerns, uh, things like moving barricades uh, to the um, to block a part of the lane that would have blocked vehicle access in, in, in the need of a, a, a quick response. Uh, the protesters also uh, uh, took steps such as linking arms to uh, create a line or a, a barricade. Um, we did not have advance notice of this protest. We often work with protest groups as they're planning protests and we work collaboratively with groups to share information so that we can properly staff protests when they occur. Um, in this case, we did not have advance warning of this protest. It was a spontaneous protest or a pop-up protest, and uh, we responded quickly, deploying approximately 100 officers from various parts of the city immediately in order to uh, maintain order, restore order, maintain order, and to disperse the crowd. Um, during the process, um, and I should explain that w as we responded, uh, approximately 100 officers using um, crowd control, public order techniques that we've practiced and refined over many, many years uh, were deployed to manage the crowd, uh, to create a, uh, a safety uh, bubble or a safety zone which allowed the Prime Minister and his detail to uh, exit the restaurant and leave the area. Once the Prime Minister uh, had left the restaurant and once the Prime Minister had left the res restaurant and his security de detail had left the area, um, we were able to uh, disperse the group of protesters. Uh, during this process, uh, one VPD officer was assaulted. Um, a 27-year-old man was taken into custody. Um, the VPD officer was uh, part of the group of officers who was working to disperse the crowd. Um, she was uh, assaulted by a protester who we believe uh, punched her in the face and uh, attempted to gouge uh, around her eyes. That protester was arrested, um, was taken to jail, and as of this morning, uh, was still in custody with charges being recommended. Um, a second person, a 34-year-old man, was, uh, was arrested for uh, obstruction of police uh, by taking deliberate actions as our officers were attempting to disperse the crowd. And um, specifically, this person took uh, actions that we believe were obstructive of the police and the lawful execution of their duties while they were dispersing the crowd. That person was uh, taken into custody, taken to jail, and has since been released pending further investigation, and charges may be forthcoming as a result of that. We expect in the coming days, in the coming weeks, in the coming months, there will be uh, continued protests. We expect that people will continue to gather to express themselves. Uh, we will continue to deploy officers as, uh, as necessary to help facilitate peaceful protests, to maintain order, and to respond to unlawful behavior. Um, we encourage people, if they are choosing to gather, to do so lawfully and to do so uh, respectfully of others and other people's points of view. I'll attempt to any, answer any questions you have. Go ahead. Um, I need to clarify that the restaurant that we responded to uh, just before 10 o'clock yesterday evening was located in Chinatown um, on Main Street around Kiefer. I am aware that there is uh, videos, there are videos um, circulating online um, of an incident at another restaurant. 
um, and I want to ensure that there's not confusion because there has been um, a, a quite a bit of confusion in the media um, and on social media about two separate incidents that occurred. So the incident that I'm referring to that, that required the police response of approximately 100 officers occurred in Chinatown on Main Street. Um, the incident that occurred at another restaurant, I believe it was on Canby Street and I can't confirm that. Um, I can't tell you for certain um, which, uh, uh, whether or not that uh, drew a significant police response. I'm not aware that it did. Um, there, may have been, um, there may have been officers who, who did respond or who were in the area, but it didn't re ne require nearly the police response as was required in Chinatown. So there was no call made from the first restaurant? It was just at the first uh, I'm not aware. Was the Prime Minister's safety at risk at any point? <clears throat> so, as you can imagine, um, a large group of protesters had gathered surrounding a restaurant and the Prime Minister was inside. The actions of the protesters, the numbers of them, the actions of them doing things like blocking the lane uh, behind the restaurant caused a, a concern for us. Um, and we took steps, uh, keeping in mind we need to balance the public's right to peacefully assemble and peacefully protest by also maintaining order and upholding the rule of law. So our response was intended to balance those rights uh, to ensure that everybody was safe, that the people inside the restaurant were safe and that the protesters were safe, balancing their right to protest while also protecting everybody's safety. And the, the large police response, 100 officers, again, did that call from the, did that call come from the Prime Minister's security detail or was that like a BPD decision? We, I can tell you that when we became aware that there was a large protest, was we were not given advance warning. It was a pop-up protest or a spontaneous protest um, in, in, our, in our understanding. Um, when we became aware that that large group had gathered, we immediately redeployed officers from throughout the city, uh, pulling them from other neighbourhoods and other uh, areas of the city so that we could probably, uh, properly uh, respond and, and, and resource what was happening down there. Can you tell us how you became aware? Uh, I'm, I don't know the answer to that. I'm sorry. Can you give more detail about the protesters who were the group? Yeah, I'm not going to speak for the protesters, um, but what I can tell, or or or, or their their views. But what I can tell you is that they were uh, they were gathered to uh, express their views on um, the ongoing situation in the Middle East, specifically the war between Israel and Hamas. Have you talked to the protesters since to try and make inroads with communicating for future demonstrations? So, as I said, we um, are always working with protest groups and always trying to work with protest groups when we become aware that protests are happening. Quite often we'll, um, we'll speak with them in advance to help facilitate um, uh, marches or protests that are happening, whether it's at the Art Gallery or Jackpool Plaza or other places throughout the city. In this case, we were not aware of it. Um, we, we will continue to uh, attempt to follow up to learn more about who they were, what their plans were, and engage with them in the future so that um, we can uh, um, help to, um, as I say, balance the, the need to um, have an environment where people can be free to peacefully assemble to peacefully express themselves while also balancing that need with public safety and uh, our responsibility to main maintain order and uphold the rule of law. So you haven't reached out yet? I can't say that for certain. What about communications with PMO or the RCMP <coughs> since or before about you know, what, what can be done about this in the future? As you say, yeah, the whenever, extent. sure, good question. So um, the Prime Minister has uh, his own security detail. Um, whether it's the Prime Minister or another head of state or other dignitaries when they arrive in Vancouver um, with their own security details, we will liaise with their security details. In this case, the Prime Minister uh, has an RCMP security detail. I'm not going to get into specific details about conversations we have with them in advance or since, but I can tell you that we are always working with um, security details with the Prime Minister or with other dignitaries or heads of state uh, to ensure safety. So when, you, oh, sorry, when you say balance between you know, the protesters and whatnot, what what crossed the line? Obviously, punching somebody in the face crossed the line. But what uh, <clears throat> what line was crossed last night that caused you to take action and take people into custody? Other than the, the obvious two people, two people were taken into custody. One person was arrested for assaulting a police officer. A second person was arrested for obstructing the police in the lawful execution of their duties. Mm -hmm. But what what was the uh, obstruction? Let's say um, I'm not going to speak specifically about what action the person took to obstruct the police officer, the matter is still under investigation and charges have not been laid. So I'm just trying to get, like, if, if somebody's going to go to a protest, like, <clears throat> if they step in front of one of your officers, are they going to get arrested? If they look at him the wrong way, like, uh, just, just trying to figure out what the line is between this peaceful protest and, uh, you know, a disruption of public order that would cause you to take action. So 
what necessitated the Vancouver Police Department's response was um, approximately 250 protesters who appeared spontaneously outside a restaurant in Chinatown where the Prime Minister was dining. Um, that's a large group of people um, in a small area. Our officers responded with the intention of controlling the crowd, managing the crowd, facilitating a peaceful protest. That uh, Certain people within that crowd uh, engaged in unlawful behavior and were arrested as a result of that. Two out of 250, that's, yep. that's, not, that's not a significant number, right? Two people were arrested. Um, in arresting that person uh, who insulted the officer, <clears throat> um, were they pepper sprayed? What happened there? Um, the person who assaulted the police officer um, it was obviously engaging in assaultive behavior. Um, there was uh, a taser that was deployed during that arrest, um, and I believe that physical, other physical control tactics were used during that arrest. I'm sorry if I missed this at the start, yep. but do you have a tally of demonstrations to date that the VPD has monitored, and you, how does that track with the historic violence? Yeah, we're up this year. Um, the last the past number of years, um, we've averaged uh, around 800 plus protests in the city of Vancouver for a variety of causes. Um, most of them um, uh, environmental or geopolitical causes. Um, 2023, we're well on pace to exceed 1,000 protests so right in the now, city of Vancouver. 1, I don't have, I'm sorry, I don't have a specific number, yeah. um, but we are certainly on pace to exceed 1,000 protests by the end of the are year. Are police concerned that protests are becoming increasingly um, <clears throat> confrontational or that they will going forward? I mean, what we saw last night, Do, are you concerned that we could see other incidents, slows, clashes? Um, what I can tell you is that since October 7th, um, there have been an increased number of people who are coming into the city to participate in protests, and there's been an increased level of emotion uh, displayed by people who are part participating in those protests. There have been some conflicts, there have been some clashes, and there are police investigations that are that have resulted from some activity that has occurred at protests. Um, we deploy officers, um, we plan ahead, we work with uh, we work with groups, and we monitor, um, for example, social media to fully understand what protests are planned, and so we can resource these um, these events properly. And there have been occasions where. Our officers, for example, at the Art Gallery shortly after October 7th um, form, had to form a line between two different protest groups to prevent them from, to prevent their um, very emotional and heightened behavior from becoming um, assaultive. And those are the control tactics, the public order tactics, the crowd control tactics that we practice and refine over many, many years in this city. And I'm talking about events like the Olympics, uh, Occupy Vancouver, Stanley Cup playoffs, um, environmental geopolitical protests. Um, we have a long history of protests in the city of Vancouver. We support people's rights to peacefully assemble, to express themselves, but we also have a responsibility to balance that right with maintaining order and upholding the rule of law. Your Mr. Jolie was protested recently in Yaletown outside of a fundraiser at a restaurant, now <coughs> Prime Minister at a restaurant. Is this a new tactic of protesters pressuring federal politicians in Vancouver at private events that are not really publicized. I can't speak to that. Your officer who was injured, is she doing okay? Does she have injuries? She survived? received some medical treatment. Okay. Um, and I, and I, I, don't, um, I don't know whether that officer is going to miss work as a result of that, um, but did have some, some facial injuries as a result and received some medical treatment. Can you clarify? I know there's not I'll look at you in a second. Yeah. I know no. there's not much you can share out of the second incident. Mm -hmm. Was it before, earlier? After, uh, You're before referring to the second incident being the yes. video that is circulating online at another yes. restaurant. Inside the restaurant. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't have... Um, 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 I don't have specific information about that. I believe it was earlier in the night. I am aware of the video that's circulating online, but I can't tell you that there was a significant police response, and I personally don't have a, um, a level of understanding of what happened there that's um, uh, in-depth enough for me to speak to it with any, with any certainty. Have you reached the owner of that second restaurant? When you say the second restaurant. Can um, be. I'm not sure. I don't know. At, at that protest, Vidges on Cambia Pier, it appears they let the PM go with his details. Did you have any intel that that wouldn't be the case? Not gonna, I'm sorry, I, I, I'm not going to speak to any intelligence or work that we do with uh, other police agencies or the Prime Minister's but, um, security detail. But your concern was that the PM would be hemmed in into a tight Chinatown block. That's why you 
brought so many officers. There was a protest that occurred. There were 250 people who gathered to protest. It was an unannounced protest and it was a spontaneous protest. Whether it was the Prime Minister or anybody else who was involved, that would have likely prompted a police response. Certainly given the fact that the Prime Minister was inside that restaurant, um, heightened the, the need for us to respond. And we took action when we did respond to uh, control that crowd, to prevent the crowd from encroaching on the restaurant, uh, to push that crowd back. Um, when it became necessary and, and, and ultimately there were two people arrested for their behavior um, within that crowd of people. Our actions helped to facilitate um, the Prime Minister's, uh, the Prime Minister and his detail uh, to leave that restaurant and once the Prime Minister and his, uh, his detail had, had left, uh, the crowd essentially dispersed. But you were aware of the first incident when you were responding to the second, you were aware that the Prime Minister had been protested at a previous restaurant? Um, I can't say for certain what the timeline is on that. I'm, I'm not sure. You weren't aware as a department? I, I just told you, I, I don't know the answer to that. Okay? Um, you call it a spontaneous protest. <clears throat> it seems like a lot of people to just spontaneously show up there. Do you, I mean, it, it sounds to me yeah. more like with that many people, it's something that's planned that maybe you guys just weren't aware of. Sorry. Let, Thank you. Let me clarify my language. Um, so it was it was uh, a pop up protest, and we were not aware of it. Uh, it appears that there was some level of organization, certainly involved, to have that number of people gather uh, in one location at one time. How wise it was it of the prime minister uh, to do this to um, you know go out in public in such a fashion to uh, you know just go out and dine like a you know regular old guy. I can tell you that the um, the prime minister and sorry, I can tell you that we work with the, whether it's the prime minister uh, or another dignitary or head of state um, comes to town. We work with that person's uh, security detail, um, and I'm not going to get into any specific um, uh, details about uh, uh, for, further to that. Does this change the calculus for VPD when federal politicians are in your city now? No. Do you expect VPD to have a um, uh, heightened response to protests going forward, given what happened last night? I'm sorry, can you say that again? Um, do you expect to have more of a heightened response um, going forward, given what happened last night? I mean, obviously that involved the Prime Minister, but you know, you said there's these growing number of, of protests happening. There, there has been some clashes and incidents before. Um, yeah, is, does that concern you, and, and how are you guys responding? So that, that kind of ties into, Mike, your question, does it change the calculus? And let me elaborate on it, because I gave you a bit of a short answer. Um, you good now? Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll elaborate on that. Uh, in this case, the incident that happened last night, certainly with uh, the Prime Minister, head of state, uh, and a protest that happened, uh, in our city prompted a significant police res response. Uh, and we'll certainly de debrief that response and we'll work with um, our partner agencies to look at uh, any, uh, any ways that we can uh, Im improve on, a, on our response and I'm sure they will, they will do the same. Um, but in a big city, Vancouver is a big city uh, and we often have world leaders, dignitaries, prime ministers um, coming to our city um, and we will continue to work with uh, their respective security details um, and work collaboratively with their respective security details to make sure that everybody uh, is is safe. Uh, this in this case we um, in this case the prime minister was in the city. There was a protest that occurred, which absolutely is not uncommon for a head of state uh, or the prime minister or any other um, uh, or, or many other dignitaries and politicians to occur. In this case, there was a protest that occurred. The protest resulted in two arrests as a result of the behavior of two people who were participating in that protest that was unlawful. Um, but ultimately, um, our response, the Vancouver Police Department's response, was quick. Uh, it was efficient. It allowed uh, for the, uh, the Prime Minister and his detail to leave that restaurant. Um, and ultimately, the, the protesters dispersed once they had, once the Prime Minister had left the restaurants and one, once they had had an opportunity to gather to express themselves and to express their points of view. Just before you go, could you mm -hmm. provide an up-to-date tally on eight incidents you're investigating since October 7th? On eight incidents? Eight. Eight, eight incidents. incidents. Yeah. Um, I don't have um, confirmed specific uh, data at this stage and I will work on getting that for you. Um, I know there's been a lot of interest in that. What I can tell you is that since October 7th, 
Um, there has been a, a, a number of additional incidents. We're seeing anecdotally an increase in incidents that are reported to the police. Um, some of them are um, uh, suspicious circumstances, people engaged in uh, behavior that is uh, out, of, out of the ordinary. And as you, as you can imagine, there's a, um, um, a heightened sense of fear that uh, many people in our community have as a result of the events that have happened overseas and, and many of the events that have reverberated here. Um, we are investigating a number of incidents that relate to some protest activity that occurred um, uh, in recent weeks. Um, we are investigating a number of incidents that relate to uh, anti-Semitic uh, gestures, actions, speech, and graffiti. But if you're looking for a specific tally and a specific number of incidents that are currently under investigation, I'll have to get back to you on that. Okay, and we're on that note, uh, Premier Eby is setting a press conference later today talking about actions to address uh, hate-motivated crimes and attacks in BC. Can you <coughs> say what actions the BPD have been uh, taking to uh, crack down on hate crime? Sure. Um, are, are you wanting to speak about hate crime in general, or uh, or hate crime as it relates to the um, the ongoing conflict in the Middle East, and specifically the war between Israel and Hamas? If you have a separate approach to the Israel-Hamas situation, I'd be glad to hear about it. But more generally, it's, it's fine. Yeah. So what I can tell you is that um, we have uh, hate crimes investigators that work within our um, uh, diversity, community, and indig indigenous relations section. Um, and those hate crimes investigators are engaged uh, whenever there is an incident reported to the Vancouver police that we believe uh, has an element of hate, prejudice, or bias. So um, whether it's a, a physical assault, hate speech, hate gestures, um, language, graffiti, um, any incident that we believe uh, contains an element of hate, prejudice, or bias, hate crimes investigators are, um, are engaged. Um, mo the most serious incidents are overseen by our major crime section. So our most experienced um, investigators from our major crime section. Um, what I can tell you is we take these incidents very seriously, uh, whether it's uh, a physical assault, uh, graffiti, uh, a gesture, or words. Um, there, If it's unlawful behavior, we'll take it seriously, and we will fully investigate. And when we uh, have evidence to support criminal charges, we'll certainly, through Crown Council, recommend criminal charges uh, be laid against a person who we believe has committed a criminal act, um, and when appropriate, when uh, there is evidence, we will also uh, encourage Crown um, through the court process to um, uh, um, advocate for um, uh, sentencing provisions, uh, hate crime sentencing provisions ab upon convictions. Your counterparts in Calgary just charged the organizer of a pro-Palestinian protest with causing a public disturbance, and they added that hate motivation. Mm -hmm because he chanted a call and response of from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. So they seem to be the only department that's done that um, so far in Canada. Mm -hmm. see, Toronto said they wouldn't do that in that situation. Would you append a hate motivation to someone causing a public disturbance at a rally for that chant? So we, you and I have had many conversations about this, um, and I'll repeat my answer. Um, when investigating hate crimes, um, and gathering evidence, uh, it's it's always contextual. We need to fully understand uh, the the entire context of uh, of an incident that's occurred to uh, determine whether or not an incident is hate motivated, and determine whether or not um, uh, a hate crime sentencing provision would be appropriate. So I, I'm not familiar with the case in Calgary uh, that you're referencing, but but what I can tell you here is if there is an incident. Uh, that is uh, reported to the police. If there's a Vancouver Police de uh, Department investigation that's launched with regards to a hate incident or a hate crime, we will look at the entire context of an incident. Um, and um, based on that entire context, the entire body of evidence that we gather, uh, we'll make a determination to, um, uh, as, to, as to whether an incident is, uh, is hate motivated and whether additional sentencing provisions are, are required. But you've surely got complaints about the chant, like other departments, and analyzed whether that is anti-Semitic and would inform that hate motivation if there was any other underlying offense. Yeah, and so, so, is it anti-Semitic? So again, it's, it's entirely contextual. Uh, if somebody's making a statement, um, and I'm not, depending on what the statement is, it's going to depend on the entire context of, of their actions. Um, and ultimately, it comes down to us consulting with Crown Council. And in, in British Columbia, Crown Council is the independent authority to um, approve 
uh, criminal charges, to lay criminal charges based on the evidence that we collect and provide to them. We certainly make recommendations to Crown Council, but ultimately it's up to Crown Council and their independent authority to assess the evidence that we collect and determine whether or not uh, charges will be laid. Further than that, to determine whether or not um, specific hate uh, hate, um, uh, sentencing hate crime sentencing provisions would be appropriate. So it's contextual it's, and, um, and we'll continue to investigate these incidents thoroughly and when appropriate we'll make recommendations to Crown Council. It's not always black and white um, and I can't, I can't speak to you in um, uh, hypothetical terms uh, based on what maybe another police agency has done or a hypothetical set of circumstances but what I can tell you is that if an incident occurs, when an incident occurs, when we engage in an investigation, we'll look at all of the circumstances, we'll conduct a thorough investigation. Um, when we do believe that there's evidence of a criminal offence, we'll submit uh, our evidence to Crown Council for that independent review and we'll trust that um, the, the, the system through Crown Council will take the appropriate steps. Steve, can you tell me anything about an incident at Crown Park this morning? Mm -hmm. I have limited information, but what I can tell you, and I, and I should have more information later in the day, but what I can tell you is that the City of, sorry, uh, Van, uh, the Board of Parks and Recreation is uh, currently in Crab Park. Um, they've been doing some uh, work within the park with respect to people who are camping overnight in the park. Our officers have been deployed, as we have been on multiple occasions in multiple different locations, essentially to stand by and to keep the peace because we know that uh, when city workers or parks workers are uh, in the park, it can sometimes become volatile. Um, this morning there was an incident as the uh, uh, parks workers were uh, conducting their business in the park. As a result of that incident, uh, there were two arrests made. We believe that um, two assaults occurred. Two arrests were made. Um, I'm working on getting additional information, but for something that has uh, just happened this morning, I don't have a complete understanding, and I'll hope to get some more information later in the day. Um, so my understanding is there was a parks worker who was injured, a park ranger who was injured as a result, um, and uh, at least one VPD officer who was assaulted. Again, I'm working on confirming that information. It's something that has just happened in the, in, in the past uh, couple of hours. Um, and I, when I get more information, I'll certainly be able to provide it to you. I just, I'm working with a very limited understanding right now. Can you tell me about an incident at Maine and 18? Um, again, limited information on that, but what I can tell you, and Jason, please jump in if, I, if I'm incorrect here. Um, our officers responded to a suspected impaired driver uh, who was driving erratically um, in the area of uh, Main Street and 18th. Our officers um, conducted uh, what's essentially called a, a box and pin. Is that correct, Jason? Okay, so our, our officers uh, managed to stop the vehicle um, and then a man was taken into custody. Uh, we believe that the person did resist arrest as they were taken into custody. So significant police presence in the area simply is a result of uh, the actions of the driver. Um, and again, if you want more information on that, I'll be able to give it to you uh, uh, later in the day. Any other questions on any other topics since you got me? No, I'm getting the cut it sign. Okay, thanks everyone. Thanks.